Hey Jude, this is Father Danny Orris, happy to be with you again for this Hey Jude series, a series of informational videos to help us uh, get to know our faith a little bit better and to become more centered on Christ. As a departure from what I normally do, I would like to talk about um, this upcoming solemnity this weekend. This weekend, we do not celebrate a normal Sunday, an ordinary time, but rather we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. The Feast of Christ the King was instituted by Pope Pius XII, and it has been a long-standing feast day that occurs usually at the close of the liturgical year. Before the Second Vatican Council, it was the last Sunday in October, and after the revisions of the liturgy, it is now the Sunday before the first Sunday of Advent. So, the Feast of Christ the King. It celebrates pretty much exactly what it says, is we celebrate the fact that Christ is King of heaven and of earth. We celebrate the fact that Christ, in his ascension, when he ascended to the Father, he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he rules the kingdom of heaven, and he rules earth. And I think, as opposed to a theological approach to this video, or a theological approach to this feast day this year, I think we should look at a more prayerful or spiritual approach. It is absolutely true, theologically speaking, that Christ reigns as king. Christ reigns as king of heaven and on earth, and he desires to reign as king of our lives. What does that mean? It means that Christ, as I say, sits at the right hand of God. He rules heaven and he rules earth. Now, that doesn't mean that Christ is literally the king of the governments on earth, although we would have a much easier time of it if he was, but rather he is the ruler of the church. Through the pope, the vicar, uh, the high priest, if you will, Christ rules through him. But in reality, Christ rules through a lot of other people. He rules through, of course, the Pope, the Cardinals, the Bishops, and to a lesser extent, the priests and the deacons. We represent Christ here on earth. We personify him in Persona Christi Capitis as the clergy. We help his reign here on earth. But I think this year, in the midst of so many uncertainties on the cusp of maybe possibly another quarantine in the middle and aftermath of a really messy presidential election, I think we need to focus on Christ as King, not only in heaven and on earth and in the church, but in our own lives. We are called to be proud of the country that we live in. Patriotism is not a sin. It's a beautiful trait to have, but it's subservient to the virtue of theophilia, which means love of God. Patriotism comes under and is purified by our love of God. I invite you to put Christ as king as far up the food chain as you can possibly put him. Let your love of Christ inform your love of country, love of government, love of the world. Let the love of Christ the King that he has for you and you have for him inform your love of the government and our nation and the world. Let that love be the driving force of every other love that you have because we are all human we are all subject to sin and the government any government any government anywhere on earth is ruled by humans even the vatican even the vicar for the servant of the servants of god the vicar of christ here on earth is a human and he is flawed if we put our faith 
in the reign of humans instead of in the reign of God, we're going to end up in a bad place. Now, I'm not being naive. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have any form of government and just pretend that Christ is reigning and we'll all be fine. No, Christ has given us forms of government. We see it in the Old Testament, particularly in the historical books of the Bible. We see, you know, the different kings and queens and seers and sages and all those things to help organize the people. God has given us this. But we put our trust in God first and foremost, and we take our love of the country and the support of our brothers and sisters in political office, and we pray for them. And we make our love and support of them subservient to our love and support of Christ, who is King. So this year, as we celebrate the liturgies of Christ the King, let us pray for our nation and pray for our government and our elected officials and pray that Christ may reign in their hearts and that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For Christ is Lord of heaven and earth. Christ is King. So we put our trust in him first and foremost. And again, surrender is a temporary state. We put our trust in him above all else, and he gives it back to us. He makes it so we can put our trust rightly and correctly in government officials, rather than a sort of vain glory or a vain trust in the appropriate people. We put the right kind of trust with the right people because we know and believe that Christ is King. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son in our lives. We give you thanks that Christ is King, that he reigns over heaven and earth. We ask you to help us clear a space in our lives for Christ as King. We ask you to help us to reverence Christ as King above all else so that everything in our life, in our world, in our political systems can fall into place. We ask these things through your most beloved Son. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Looking forward to chatting with you next week when we'll discuss Advent and the new liturgical year. God bless you and happy Feast of Christ the King.